Hi. Uh, you all know me, I'm Most of them were dressed in white, actually. I think all of them. 
remember dressing white. Now that you mention it, like it, it looked like it, 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 it was like if uh, the people of the Kaaba went to Chichen Itza and started to go around in circles. That's kind of what it looked like. And uh, I was actually on top of the serpent on its back, and I was one of about maybe two, three hundred people. The serpent was incredibly thick. You know, it was the 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 the, the, the serpent's back was about ten to twenty feet wide, and the serpent's length was you know hundreds of feet. I don't know, maybe three hundred feet. I don't know how tall the pyramid is, but it could easily slither in one movement up the pyramid and down the pyramid. And I was of a group of people that were on its back kind of hanging on to these hairs or feathers. They were really soft. They were really soft hairs. But they were more like soft feathers, I guess. I don't know what they were. And uh, watching all this show, you know, underneath us. And um, uh, at the very top of the pyramid was another form of God, or what I consider another form of God. Christ-like figure uh, with a headdress, a green and, 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 and white headdress, and a, a loincloth, a green and white loincloth, and, uh, and some uh, bracelets and, and anklets. And he was dancing, or he was dancing. He was, a, he was this white guy, he was bearded. And I can only describe as Christ. I mean, he looked like Christ. Christ, if you he he went fracking, you know, native or something, and he was dancing to the serpent. You know, he was dancing. He was doing this dance at the very top of the pyramid, with this little building with three doors. He was in front of the three doors, dancing. And I knew at that moment that I was already dead. That I was dead as a doornail, and that that moment in time was eternal. It was a moment that was never gonna. Expire. This moment of us always has been, always will be, is always being type of moment. Um, an absolute bliss. Just the most insanely wonderful bliss you can imagine. And in the presence of what I considered my maker, you know, the, the, the being responsible for my creation, the creation of my person. So it was a nice spot. Heaven and the trench was hell. And uh, the trench was actually very far away from any, anybody's maker. Everybody was kind of curious why they were there, you know. How can, you, how can eternity be so cruel? That was the, 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 the essence of, of hell. And uh, in heaven it was how can eternity be so cruel, you know. So. That vision I had in Fargo, North Dakota, and uh, then I came down to Mexico, and I, you know, I started reading about Terence McKenna and about you know the um, echelon and um, the time wave theory, the zero time wave, the I Ching experiments. I had been into, into all that stuff before with a website named Deoxy and um, Lyceum, and I was always in the psychedelic movement from, you know, a long time ago. But after these experiences, it all kind of fell into place. It all started to, like, you know, coalesce into, into a, a sensible vision. You know, the vision started to coalesce. And of course, I continued doing psychedelics. Psychedelics is what I do. And um, just uh, last month in October, um, I'm sorry, in September, in September, a month before last, right around uh, my mom's birthday, I did the most massive mushroom trip I could ever have done. I, I, I went, you know, as deep as I could on the psilocybin um, world. And uh, 
Well, that was pretty interesting. Um, I went to the white light. <laughs> always suspected in my psychedelic visions and trips that it has to do with death. But in this September, the last September, it was definitely um, proven to me that that's the case because I, I, I don't want to say I OD'd on mushrooms because I don't think you can, you can OD on mushrooms. I think mushrooms are not going to kill you. But the fear of a trip can kill you. Anyways, I, I was in the kitchen and um, I had ingested this huge amount of mushrooms and um, they were freshly picked. I had gone to pick them up that morning. It's still mushroom season and there was quite a few out there in the woods. And I had, um, I didn't even really, you know, worry about measuring the amount of them, but you can imagine it was a pretty hefty, you know, sum of mushrooms. And um, they call them San Isidros here. They're basically Cubans, mushrooms. Um, but very, very strong because it was the peak of the season. Anyways, I was in the kitchen uh, trying to, you know, relax by doing the dishes, which somehow relaxed me. And suddenly I went down, boom, into the floor. And. Um, and I felt my body go very sti stiff, you know. I felt my body go very, very stiff. I couldn't even move. I couldn't, I felt I couldn't breathe. And, um, wow, zoom. You guys know that scene in Star Wars where they enter into hyperdrive? Well, that's kind of what it feels like when you, when you leave your body. There's some elements of that in when you leave your body. But I was leaving my body. I could hear voices in the distance of people that are very far away. In Mexico City, my aunt and other people think, thinking about me in that moment. And I was worried about what they would think if they would find me dead in the kitchen. That was my, that was my trip, you know. Thinking, oh, I OD'd on mushrooms. I'm going to die today. So, but I didn't. I, I just went very close, I guess. Anyways, I... It was this kind of like, it was this kind of like tunnel, of, but not a dark tunnel, it was a psychedelic tunnel. It was a tunnel of psychedelia, of multiple colors and multiple lights. And at the end of this tunnel, a really white, a really bright white light, a really, really white bright light, which looked suspiciously like a galaxy or the center of the galaxy, or I don't know what the hell it was, or the heaven. <laughs> Anyways, um, in that tunnel, one second of my existence on that kitchen floor extended for like the beginning and the end of time. And I could see the pulsing of time. Like, you know, they talk about the Big Bang and stuff, how it everything goes into a one point it comes out of one point well imagine that but suddenly uh, in fast you know and in, 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 in speed it up so you can see the pulsing of the creation and the destruction of the universe over and over and over again and you're kind of stuck in a kitchen in Valle de Bravo dead watching this pulsating universe which creates and destroys, creates and destroys and you can't get out because somehow it's a very, it was a very strong experience because you, there was no rest in that. Every breath inward was the universe going inward and, and, and collapsing and every breath outward was the creation of a new universe you know so time really really screwed up on me time i think in the ayahuasca trip and in this mushroom trip in september the the the, the really important element the really strong element uh of the of the of the vision was time because time is an illusion of our consciousness there is no such thing as time every moment 
of our existence is infinite. And I think at the moment of death, we get kind of winded, we get idea, or we, or we, uh, we wake up to the, to the realization that every second in time can be repeated over and over and over and over and over throughout time. That, that things don't end. Bhagavad Gita says it to a certain extent, you know, neither you nor I know that all these princes and all these kings ever existed, nor nor we ever not existed, you know. That's the, the, the idea that things are always. So, it, it kind of like rounded up my vision of heaven and hell with the ayahuasca trip, because suddenly I realized why the, the soldiers in Verdun were in hell, and why these millions of people in this, turning around this pyramid, were in heaven. Because in Verdun, the soldiers were killing each other for supposedly good patriotic reasons and whatever, but in, 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 in fact, it was just murder. And in Chichen Itza, and the other vision, it was actually going to or towards or, 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 or coming towards God. So, you know, it's funny with psychedelics. My dad once told me it's like a ladder. You go up, you know, a few steps and then you're in a different floor and there's nothing ever the same and then you take another trip and you go up a few more steps and you're in a different floor and there's, you know, you, you kind of like round up the previous trips and it's true. I, 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 can, I can vouch for that. So now I guess the question is why am I making this video for you guys? Well, one, because I, I, I think I, I should share these two trip reports. But the other one, more interesting one, is that um, December 21st, 2012, which is in 29 days, uh, is what I consider the possible end of time, where suddenly we're all going to come to the conclusion or the idea or the premise that every moment is infinite. Does that mean that we die? Well, no, because as far as I understand it, consciousness does not expire. You continue to be conscious, but you strip away the illusion of time and you come into contact with eternity. And if you do that collectively, well, that's pretty intense, isn't it? And uh, why am I going to Chichen Itza then? If, if it could happen anywhere. Well, because in Chichen Itza is where I saw my vision of what I consider to be the creator of mankind. And it's certainly not a human being, it's more of a serpent being. But if a serpent being created mankind, it must have some ideas of what it wants us for. And I hope certainly it's not food. <laughs> Maybe it is. You know? sheeps going to the slaughter. But if it isn't, then maybe it's a diff different type of food. Maybe it's, maybe our creator, uh, the creator of mankind, um, benefits in a different way from us and uh, from creating us. And maybe it's our love and our, and our, and our love for it that benefits. I don't know. Anyways, I, I, if time comes to an end in 29 days from now, I would like to think that I will be there with the serpent. And she needs so If the serpent doesn't come down and time doesn't stop and it's just business as usual, well then, you know, we'll do some more mushrooms and some more ayahuasca and have other visions and come back and... Uh, <clears throat> try to, you know, figure out what to do with our lives, as we've always done. But if it does change everything, I want to be in that place where it makes sense. You know, I want to be in that place where I had that vision. And uh, the ayahuasca vision. And um, as far as the other stuff, you know, family and work and business as usual, well, that goes on, doesn't it? And
and then you try to you try to make sure to you know um, take care of the folks that need taking care of and do the things that need doing and uh, you do it without remorse and without a sense of gratification from it. You just do it because it's what it is. So that's what I wanted to share today. Uh, we're 29 days away from the end of the world as we know it. Um, may the gods bless you all and may the great spirit, the great creator um, bless you especially. And, um, if it is the end of time, it'll be in the end of time for gods and men both. When we go back to that pulsating creator. <laughs> That's a good thing. So, God bless. A wonderful end of the world and we'll see you on the other side.